Welcome back to HowToAV.TV. We're joined over the line again by Daniel Branton of AV Experts CYP. And today we're talking about troubleshooting AV equipment. Now, there is a lot of AV equipment out there, many, many different products, many different brands, all doing similar things, completely different things. Dan, this is a very big subject that we're landing on you today. And I don't know where to start. Where shall we start? You are right, it is a large topic. Uh, so much so that we actually ran a one hour webinar on it recently, just on troubleshooting an AV system. And even that we were sort of compressing things down a bit because there are a lot of things you can try to fix the system. But in a nutshell, if you've installed a system or you're planning a system and there's some sort of issue with that system, it's not running properly as you would expect, then of course you've got to look at ways to resolve that. So the first point really is to actually look back at the system you've specified. So are all the sources and screens and anything in between, should they hypothetically work together? So that would be, as I say, in my opinion, the first thing you want to do is check that the products you specified for the project should work together in a system with each other. And compatibility is something that we should be able to make some assumptions about, isn't it, Dan? And, and, and I think HD Base T is a really good example. HD Base T technology is available from, from all good brands. Um, and we should therefore be able to um, assume that if we connect multiple brands together with HD Base T, that they're all going to work perfectly compatible. But that's not really the case, is it? There is a level of cross compatibility, yes, but a lot of manufacturers they take a format like HD Base T and they then try and make the most of it. So they maybe add some features or push the boundaries of what it can do. So in certain situations, a standard transmitter might be absolutely fine with another brand's receiver. It could be tried and tested, it probably will work if they both follow the same protocols, but there may be some functions that don't. Uh, HD Base T has got so advanced nowadays, some of them can handle USB data as well, some of them can handle HDR and Dolby Vision. There are lots of things that you can throw into the mix. So yes, there should be a level of compatibility, but it is definitely worth checking that before you try and put brand A with brand B. And, and you were talking earlier on about checking that your system works. Now, it, there are a lot of great AV experts out there, but, but one of the easiest sources of, of AV expert knowledge should be your manufacturer, should be your supplier. A, a, a good supplier these days has got experts within the team who can really help with that system design. And most of the time these days, in, it, it should be free. Yeah, it's very true. You do need that support. Now, let's face it, if we look at a list of HD Base T products, for example, there's a lot of them. Even just from, from our range, we have a lot of products. So, of course, you need that support behind you to work out what they actually do. There are really simple point-to-point -point kits. They're very, very straightforward. But you then get up into models that include simple automation features and a variety of things that you need to know about. So, absolutely right. You do need to have the support of the supplier to actually tell you and help guide you to the right products for the range. So that again, as you say, is definitely key in specifying a good system that is fully compatible with all the areas that go around that system. And your manufacturers, your suppliers, we want your system to work. So pick up the phone, ask for some advice and they will be there to help. So if you've gone back over the spec and you've looked and said, right, yes, all the sources and all the screens and all the bits in between should be compatible with each other, then the next step really is to check your physical cabling. So are there any power cables that have come loose? Are there any HDMI cables that are not in the right socket or that have come loose again? So again, another key thing really is to actually go through and just check the basics. Is everything wired up correctly? Is everything powering up correctly? Even, for example, just run a simple power off reset to switch everything off, switch it all back on again and try again. So that would be a key thing. As I say, firstly would be to check that all the products should work together. Next step I would say is then to actually check the physical cabling and just make sure that everything is seated correctly. So realistically, if you've gone in, you've, you've checked that everything should work together. You've checked that all your HDMI cables and any other connection cables are plugged in. Everything seems to be powered up. Everything's connected correctly but you're still not getting a signal at the other end, for example. That's going to be a common problem where you've got things that are sources that are putting out a signal, but you're not getting something at the other end of it. So the next step really would be to just take that one product at a time. In a simple TV, uh, sorry, source to TV connection, there's not a lot you can test really apart from, are they both on? Is the HDMI cable working? Maybe switch the HDMI cable out, see if that fixes it. 
If not, you might have a faulty source, a faulty cable, or a faulty screen. But when you get into larger AV systems, you might have a source, you might have some sort of audio video receiver, an AVR, you might then have a video distribution system, sending it out to more rooms in the house, and then you might have a screen at the far end of that. So if you've got a, a problem where your source is not getting to your screens, it makes sense to go through it step by step. And there are devices designed to help you with this as well. So for example, your source will be outputting an HDMI. That's gonna be the most common option. So if you go for a signal tester, for example, or a pattern analyzer or a pattern generator and signal analyzer, which we do as a, a handheld device, you can go from your source via HDMI into the signal analyzer. The signal analyzer will tell you there and then if the product is outputting a signal, if it's 4K, what color spacing, what audio format, all that sort of information will come in from the source. So straight away, you know my source is outputting correctly. You can tick that one off your list. The next product in your signal path might be an AVR, say an audio video receiver. So what you would do then is from the AVR, you come out of that with HDMI into the signal analyzer. And you then say, well, I know the Blu-ray signal makes it into my AVR. Is it coming out the other side? You plug it into your analyzer and it will tell you if there's a signal, again, if it's 4K, what sort of resolution and all those sorts of features. If there's no signal coming out of the AVR, you've now worked out that it's, it's not going through the AVR properly. So a few things to test. Is the cabling done correctly again? Is the AVR powered on, switched on? And then maybe check some configuration within the AVR. So that's just sig simple signal path analysis, working your way down the signal path testing at each point to see where the signal stops and that can be done anywhere through the through the process of the signal path and when you talk about simplicity one of the cheapest and simplest uh, pieces of kit that you should have in your test kit is just some spare tried and tested HDMI cables isn't it Dan exactly and and don't forget as well that the assumption is that if you've got a brand new packaged HDMI cable you rip that bag open and you plug it in you'll think it's brand new of course it's going to work well it's not always the case because we all know that as well as manufacturing is, is done incredibly well and usually the success rate is very high, there's no reason to say that that cable you've just opened, it, it might work, it might not work. So again, you might want to test your HDMI cables before you go and install them into the system. And again, for example, the signal analyzer and pattern generator that I mentioned, the little XA3P, also tests HDMI cables. So whilst you're doing your signal path analysis, you're checking point to point to see if there's a signal there, you could also just loop your HDMI cable in and out of the device and test to make sure that that's, that cable is passing data correctly. So again, that's another key thing to check when you're doing this sort of analysis.